Hello, Christian Livingstone here, and uh, I've just been out in my melon garden plucking melons, and uh, right now I've only plucked uh, the cantaloupes because uh, there's one uh, row of uh, watermelons, they're not quite ready, so uh, I think we'll go out in the garden and just take a quick survey. Uh, I've had this garden out here about three or four years, never gardened before, you know, I'm not a big advocate of uh, gardening, you know, it's okay, but there's a lot of uh, time input and uh, honestly uh, with the free market and the division of labor uh, it's really cheaper probably just to go buy food in the store. It, at no time in human history has it ever been cheaper to buy food and uh, that's a good thing. You know, people don't have to toil you know, so much uh, of their time and, and uh, income just to put food in their mouths and food in the uh, mouths of their, their children. So, uh, you know, I think the free market's great. I think the division of labor is great. I think if you want to do this stuff for a hobby, that's great too. Uh, especially if you have kids, then you can farm them out. And, you know, because as an adult, you know, when you factor in all the uh, uh, time you put in and the, you know, the little consumables that go into it, uh, you know, if you want to pay yourself, uh, you know, seven thirty-five an hour, that's about what you're going to get out of it. So to me, my time's uh, worth more than that. And But I, I'm doing this just to learn the uh, economics and the inputs and outputs. And so I can now say that, uh, yeah, no, don't, don't try to save any money by gardening unless you've got time on your hands and uh, that you're not losing money anyway. Or if you have kids, farm the kids out, let them uh, do it. Then it becomes more sensible, I think. But otherwise, uh, food is cheaper than ever in, uh, uh, in the free market. And, uh, you know, nowadays you can uh, have uh, that time and money to do other things, more lucrative things, more recreational things, uh, funner things. But uh, this has been pretty fun. It's uh, gotten better every year. Uh, you know, it was pretty rough back in this area, but uh, the landlords that I've had, and if there's been two, I, I kind of came with the property here. But, uh, you know, I've always had a free hand on this property to do whatever I want, and uh, part of my rental agreement is to uh, maintain the grounds and the uh, do the mowing and, and landscaping and stuff. And so, you know, I just, I enjoy it. It's uh, right here for me to do it. So. I've developed some things the way I want it, and uh, uh, everybody's happy about it. So anyway, I'm going to go out into the garden here because this may be the last season I do this. Uh, my sister and I have been talking, and I might uh, relocate to her uh, uh, region uh, of uh, North America before too long, at some point maybe. But uh, I did kind of want to capture this because it's really uh, uh, as good as it's ever going to be, I think, right now. After, like I said, three or four years, uh, and they're all melon rows pretty much laid out for melon rows, uh, plastic covered, which uh, benefits the melons. But there's a, a couple of those rows that are uh, I've got planted other stuff, which it's not the most efficient use of space because, like I said, they're laid out for melons. But I've got some tomatoes and uh, lettuce and uh, some peppers on there too. And I've uh, allotted uh, the landlord uh, one row for whatever they want to do with it. So, but it's not, they didn't put any melons down. So let's go take a look. And here's the melons that I plucked today. And these are cantaloupes, of course. And uh, this particular variety of cantaloupe is called uh, sugar cube, which, uh, you know, implies that they're sweet and uh, also a little smaller than uh, the norm, which they are. Uh, my neighbor barks, dog barks a bit. And here's those two rows I was talking about that uh, uh, are not for melons. And uh, this is my row right here. And uh, you can see I got tomatoes there and I've plucked them too. And there's some banana peppers and a couple of varieties of uh, lettuce I got going down there. And uh, there's the uh, landlords as well. But here's a, a nice uh, row of melons. These are cantaloupe. And these are cantaloupe. These two rows were both planted at the same time. These next two rows were planted uh, 
uh, about 30 days later. And down on the very end, there's one row of uh, watermelon. We'll take a look down there. It's it's almost time for them. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. You see, there's some castoffs down here. I figure about 20% have been cast off for various reasons, but here we're right in the middle of it. Those noisy dogs. Maybe I'll hold off uh, since they're making so much noise. Yeah, the uh, watermelons are a little trickier to know when to uh, pluck or, or, you know, on the cantaloupes it's called the slip and it's easy to know what the slip is on the cantaloupes, but in this particular variety it's it's even easier because they turn that pale yellow and boom, you know they're ready and sure enough you just put a, about a pound a, a finger, uh, your index finger over the the vine at, at the melon and the stem just pops off very easily, but it's uh, different with the watermelon. The uh, watermelon, uh, you know, the vine doesn't just slip off the watermelon. It has to be cut and uh, you have to really know uh, uh, the signs for the particular variety. You know, there's a number of them. The tendrils, uh, it can be, uh, you can get a, uh, uh, the, not only the underside of the melon, but also uh, there's a little dull spot on the top of the melon. And, you know, kind of, a lot of people, uh, you know, use the old thud, uh, tap on the melon, but, uh, you know, I'm really not an expert yet on uh, the watermelon, so I, uh, my tendency is to, uh, uh, you know, cut them too early, so I'm leaving them uh, a little late. Uh, you know, already I know these are not ready, but uh, they're getting close. There's a lot of melons uh, down in, in here that, uh, you know, they're deceptive because, uh, where are they? Yeah, they're they're hard. So that is the quick overview of the garden this year, and uh, it's been good. It's been real good, and it's been uh, a little easier each uh, each season. You know, when I first moved here, there was a, a big old stump and a big tree trunk laying down here, and another. Uh, stump over here that I actually cut out. It was a, uh, uh, it had already been cut down, but uh, the stump was still there and it was growing up like a, a big bush. It was a walnut tree and uh, I got in there with a buddy and uh, got my, uh, my uh, electric chainsaw and, and went below grade and, and cut it out and made it go away. And oh, there was a bush here that I, uh, uh, removed, uh, had another buddy uh, and I pulled it out of there with my pickup truck and uh, split it down the middle and divided it into uh, two bushes and you, know, you might see them over there, well, I might point it out, but uh, and there was big fence post back here and it, you know it was all covered in crabgrass so this place has come a long way and uh, you know I kind of expanded it to the eight rows but then I started downsizing and uh, and I'm now to the place where uh, you know this will probably be it uh, I've had uh, some of these rows covered with the plastic for three years or more and and that's about all they can tolerate is three years in the Sun and they start to deteriorate and I don't know if you can tell but some of those rows there's lots of uh, black tape uh, patching them up but there was a, a real severe uh, hailstorm here a couple of years ago so that's mostly what that was but still the, the plastic only lasts about three or four years if you're careful so I'm thinking uh, yeah I might uh, just tear out all the plastic after this season and uh, you know I might move uh, you know east uh, uh, to where my sister uh, lives uh, and help her get something like this started and, and reproduce much of this kind of thing that you see here. She's got kids, she wants gardens, she likes uh, 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 gardening and uh, uh, you know she sees that I'm just all into it here, you know, not as a 
as a passion, but just as a, kind of an experiment. That's really what I'm doing it for, just to see the inputs and, uh, you know, who knows, uh, if uh, the economic times get real tough and the social chaos and uh, gets uh, kooky, uh, it, it might be nice to have, have your own garden and uh, not have to go out so much into the market to, to get things. You know, the supply chains could break down. Uh, so, you know, it'll be good to, to have some of these skills, even if you don't necessarily rely on them. Uh, you know, the skills are, are good to have, I suppose. So that's about it uh, for the uh, uh, view. Maybe I'll turn on the uh, sprinklers. It's about noon now. I, I usually turn them on about this time because uh, it's uh, hot. It's August right now, and uh, my lettuce over there, uh, I've been tending to let the uh, leaf lettuce grow up uh, a little more than what you see there and then I'll just uproot it break off the roots throw throw that away and and uh, process the uh, the leaves uh, uh, in my sink but uh, and then I'll just reseed behind them before I was plucking uh, leaves off but I don't do that anymore I just reseed and then uh, you know, water the heck out of them, get them germinating, even though it's hot. You know, lettuce doesn't do so well in the heat, but uh, I water the heck out of them, and, and that quells the uh, temperatures down, and I can still get them to germinate and come up, but, uh, you know, it's it's really easier in the, the earlier spring when it's cool for, for the lettuce to get started. But if they can get started, you know, I can usually keep them going even in the summer like this. But uh, I got to throw a lot of water on them. And uh, as you can see, there's two uh, two sprinkler heads there and there's two over there. Maybe I'll turn on the water and, and give you an idea of what it looks like to water this. Because, you know, when I first moved in here, the... Uh, the uh, well, th this well here, had, the, the pump was broken and it was just in disrepair. So uh, uh, the previous owner, uh, you know, I pitched him uh, uh, that I would buy this uh, pump and I bought it tax free for 99 bucks, free shipping, uh, and uh, installed it. And uh, it's just been uh, a delight to have. And uh, ultimately, I, I plumbed out some uh, uh, more lines to. Uh, you know, sprinkle this whole property, including the landlord's property, uh, you know, over 200 feet uh, up front there, and it's uh, really turned turned out well, and the grass is doing well. So let me turn that on. But yeah, that's a uh, free uh, well water. And that's a jet pump, uh, but I, you know, really recommend that uh, you consider a submersible pump if you've got a well there. They cost a little more, but uh, they, they can push the water a little better, but still this one does quite well. And uh, it's, it's got a Venturi in it, and I put uh, two lines going down on that well because it can do it. it uh, it's a, a little more efficient than most jet pumps, but uh, uh, and, you know, like I said, it, it pushes all the way out uh, uh, over 200 feet, which is a, a good deal. But a submersible pump w would do that uh, very easily. But you can see there's uh, four sprinkler heads going from that one pump, but there's, there's two lines uh, coming out. I, I buried it uh, up to this point, and then it's uh, on top of the surface. So I got each of the uh, two sprinklers on one line. And these two sprinklers on one line as well. So I'm running two lines with four heads. And that a little more evenly distributes it. And uh, I've got them in a daisy chain fashion. I, I suppose you could tee them off. But uh, I have one. And then it continues on to the next one. So, you know, uh, the one that gets the water first really has a, a bit more pressure. So the second one doesn't have quite as much. But you can adjust the sprinklers and, and you know, it's, it's hardly uh, detectable uh, which one is at the uh, beginning of the daisy chain and which one's at the end. So, uh, yeah, a $100 pump is, is doing all of this. Uh, and the water is uh, at no cost, and uh, you know it's just the uh, electricity to to get the pump going, and uh, you're off and running. So, 
you know you can throw water at this you don't have to get real fancy with drip lines or anything if you've got well water you know use it and uh, you know don't be ashamed oh am I not using water efficiently you know water isn't ever lost it's you know the atmosphere of the earth and evaporation it's a closed system this water may seem to be used inefficiently and some people could argue that it was but I don't think so I think uh, you know it's it all goes up comes down and uh, you know this isn't in a drought climate uh, there's uh, plenty of water right here and uh, the water table is is quite uh, high the uh, that pump uh, those lines uh, touch water at about 25 feet I think uh, if I, I recall uh, you know when I put them down there so there's plenty of water uh, to throw around here and uh, it's great but it has it's been uh, uh, really uh, good this season and uh, it was a little easier it became easier each time but a little easier also because uh, I used uh, some pre-emergent down these aisle ways you see all this bare ground and it's uh, uh, relatively weed free uh, because I used the pre-emergent down those areas. Uh, previously, I used a hoe and, and put a lot of time and effort in, you know, keeping it relatively weed-free down, down these aisleways, but, uh, you know, that's no fun. So I, I finally did. I finally uh, just uh, mixed up a little pre-emergent and spread it around, and uh, it saved a lot of, a lot of time. And so uh, I recommend pre-emergent. I don't know if uh, pre-emergent interferes with, uh, you know, somebody's sensibility when it comes to, uh, like, uh, an organic practice. It, it may violate uh, at least a, a USDA uh, organic practice. But, you know, it, pre-emergent is not a pesticide. You know, it's not a fertilizer. It's it just prevents uh, seeds from uh, germinating. So I don't know. I don't know if it violates anybody's you know hippie or new age sensibilities. I don't care about that stuff. I'm not a hippie. I'm not a new ager. I'm so there you have it. That's the Christian Livingstone method and attitude on gardening.